get over there and go back to work. This is not Peeping Tom. Good afternoon, everybody. The Irish Demon finally back with another video. Sorry I've been missing for a few days. I had a pretty bad migraine and we had some damage to our roof that I had to get fixed so that we didn't have to swim out to answer the door. Now, today we're having a look at a guy who decides to audit some Hollywood models. And he's definitely not even remotely creepy. Please stay tuned to the end of this video. I've got a very special and important announcement. Welcome, everybody. We are back again in Hollywood, California. Yeah. And this time we're at the Milk Studios on the corner of Cahuenga and Willoughby. And we're going to be just checking it out to see if everyone will respect our right to record in public. Looks like they got something going on over here. Let's go across the street and find out, shall we? Okay, now for my new viewers out there, please um, understand do not confuse this activity with a peeping Tom. This is not Peeping Tom. If you have to preface what you're about to do by saying, please don't confuse this activity with a Peeping Tom, then there's a very good chance you're a creep. It's kind of like saying, please don't confuse this activity with fapping. Peeping Tom in my book is on private property, being sneaky, trespassing, looking through windows of private homes. This is not a private home. This is a business and we are on public property. And if they were really that concerned um, about the public looking in, they would probably have the door closed. And so, no, I sleep well at night doing this. Uh, this is not not anything unusual now okay so it's one thing to suggest that you're not a peeping tom but when it comes to saying that this is not unusual i'll take things that aren't true for 500 please ding 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 it is unusual i'm not really sure if that's how that game works i just i know the meme or as was said in the famous song it's not unusual to put camera over the wall no it is unusual they may find it weird they might be curious and that's perfectly fine you know, one thing that we don't do is we do not reveal to these folks why we are out here. We don't tell them this is a First Amendment audit. Most auditors don't. Until the very end, maybe. Uh, because if we did, it would spoil or ruin the experiment. They would get on their best behavior, they would change their behavior, and then what are we doing? We're just wasting our time. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet that even if they did know what you were doing, and even if they did know it was a First Amendment audit, they would probably do what I would do. Call you a loser and tell you to get lost. And yes, you are wasting your time and everybody else's. some kind of a photo shoot or something. I do not know why you are a First Amendment auditor, sir. You clearly have a career as a detective. You go to a Hollywood model studio where there's a guy with a camera taking photographs of a model. Dun, dun, dun. It must be a photo shoot. Well done, Sherlock. This next part of the scene contains some copyrighted music, so please enjoy some of mine. Checking it out. For, for what? Oh, just because. Oh. Wow. And that's that from Milk Studios. Wow, I can't believe they closed the door on a creep. Do you remember that time there about two minutes ago when you said this? If they were really that concerned um, about the public looking in, they would probably have the door closed. So let's say that same logic applies and now they are concerned enough to close the door. That would hint most people to, I don't know, go away. I wonder what this guy does.
Definitely not creepy pointing a camera up over the wall where some people are being photographed. Definitely not peeping Tomish at all. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've got a feeling this is illegal and this guy is not worth my time to look it up. He literally just said that they're not concerned so they didn't close the door. Now they have addressed you and closed the door so you climb up on a wall and videotape them over the wall. Oh good, it looks like he's got the hint and he's moving along. This just in, no, getting a second angle as a peeping Tom. <laughs> Do you mind not filming? Uh, we'll be out here in a little bit. We're just, it's not even that exciting, but you're distracting yeah. everyone. Okay, well they don't have to look, they can focus. I know, I know. Just focus I mean, on their I work. I can't really tell you to leave, but if you don't mind. You know. Super, yeah, we'll be out here in a minute. Super. Hey, what's up, buddy? What's going on, man? You tell me. Oh, we're just out here checking it out. There's nothing to check out, pal. Hey, so we got a lot take of that stuff. and that out of there. All right, cool. Oh, enjoy. really? Go ahead and edit no, no, it up. No, no, over no, there. no, no. It doesn't work that way. We're in public. Are you going to stand here all day? Because I got all day. Are you going to stay here all day, too? Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. You're bro. violating the Bain Act, buddy. If I were you, I would book it. The Bain Act, also known as the Tom Bain Civil Rights Act, basically stops people from interfering with another person's constitutional rights by acts of violence. So I'm not really sure how that applies here. Get over there and go back to work. I work here, you should book it. I'm on public property. You're disturbing the peace, man, come on. I wouldn't say a word to anybody. You guys approached us. You're sticking your camera over my yeah, fence. Dude. You gotta oh, stop me. Okay, you're, you're supposed to be looking that you way. Get out here and go back to work. Mind your own business. Oh, look what he did, he shined the light on me, oh my god. Well, beta boy, you just claimed that him shining the light on you was an act of violence. Sick ass fool. We're not here to cause a disturbance. We're on public. If we were on their property, I can understand the concerns. We're on public property. Damn, sick ass fools. Well. We're gonna call this one a fail. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a fail too. A fail at life. If you've got nothing better to do than poke your camera over the wall of people who are trying to work, then that is a fail. Definitely a fail. And there we have it, folks. Definitely not a peeping Tom. And I'm definitely not drinking pure whiskey. <sighs> Anyway, folks, all jokes aside, let's get down to some serious business. As you will know, there have been some horrific scenes coming out of the Ukraine over the past two weeks. This is a development that I've basically been following since about 2013. And following the annex of Crimea in 2014, this is something that's been at the forefront of my mind for quite a bit. The slow growing escalation in Ukraine has been a matter of great concern for me and for a lot of other people. And as we all know, it came to a head a couple of weeks ago when Russian troops entered the Ukraine. Now, let me be very clear before I continue. I hold 
an oil will towards Russian people or even some of those Russian soldiers, a lot of them obviously didn't know what they were going into. A lot of these people are conscripts who had no choice in the matter. Now we can argue about whether or not that choice still stands and whether or not those people should walk away and that is something I would love to have a conversation with you in a live stream about. But the issue remains on the ground that a lot of people are being displaced and sadly a lot of people are being horrifically injured and having their lives lost. Over the years I've met quite a few people and have a few really good friends from both Russia, Ukraine and other parts of the Eastern Bloc. And so there are a bunch of people that I hold very dear to my heart. The two men that were here yesterday helping me put the roof on my house are from Moldova and they're extremely worried about their family back home as it seems like Moldova is in the crosshairs of Lukashenko and Putin. And I would say that this draws a lot of fear for the people in that area about what's going to happen next. I want to also make it clear that this is not a political statement. This is not right versus left. This is not Russia versus Ukraine. This is not Putin versus Vladimir Zelensky. This is human beings on the ground suffering. This is over a million people already displaced and probably millions more to come. This is a country of 40 million people that's been ground to a halt by war. This is a modern European country. And now this morning I saw the horrific news that the biggest nuclear reactor in the whole of Europe was just attacked. The details of it are still unclear, but it does seem like at the moment it's safe. Now, as for military aid and all of that kind of stuff, I think the UN, and I'm sure we can argue about the level of support that they've given Ukraine, they've got it somewhat under control. There's not a whole load that you or I can do where it comes to the military side of things. But what we can do is we can get together and help some of those people on the ground that really need us. Those who are currently without food, without water, without medical aid, without transport. Ukraine is not a very wealthy country. The average wage in that country is less than $500 a month. So for people there to just leave their homes, leave their lives and leave their jobs and move to another part of the country or to another country entirely is a lot more difficult than it would be for many of us. So I was racking my brains trying to think, what can we do to show our support? And then I thought, what do we do in Ireland when somebody's going through something difficult? Well, we make them a nice hot drink, don't we? So what I want to try to do is to get you folks to consider grabbing one of these cups that I made. And we'll all raise a hot drink together in a live stream in a few weeks time for the people in Ukraine and surrounding areas that are going through a very difficult time right now. These cups are available on my Teespring and they are either $20 or 20 euro depending on where you are in the world. And all of the proceeds from that will go directly to a charity that we will all choose. I want to try to aim to get a charity that specifies that they give the money or give the support to the average people that have to go through all this stuff. Can you imagine a situation where you're at home and shells are flying, regardless of where they're coming from, and they could land on your home, your school, your work, your kids, your vehicle, and then you have to just grab everything that you can fit in a backpack and hope that you can get out of there. They're the people that I really care about and they're the people that I want to help. I think the profit on each cup is about maybe $10 or so. So even if we sold 10 of them and we managed to gather together a hundred bucks to send over to help somebody, that could be a huge push in the right direction for someone. Now I've no doubt that this video is going to be demonetized, as have a lot of my videos, and when I ask for your support, I gotta say I really do get it very often. I get the PayPals, I get the Super Chats, I get all that stuff. Forget that today. Forget me, forget any of that stuff. And if you would usually leave a donation, consider sending it instead to the people on the ground that need it. Grab one of those cups, or if you want to, if you prefer, you can send a PayPal to me and just specify that it is for the people in Ukraine. And when I get the money from Teespring, I'll put that all together and we'll find a charity. We'll send it over and see what we can do together. Anyway, lads and lassies, thank you so much for that. And to my friends who I know are stuck in Ukraine at the moment, let me just say that I'm thinking about you every day. I hope you're going to be safe and Slava Ukraina. And to the Russian high command, I've got something to say to you too. <laughs>